Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nation. We'd like to welcome you to New Birth Christian Center Live. We hope that you turned your living room into your life room and that you're ready to praise a great name. How many of you know that God is great? He's our provider. He's our healer. And all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus and we are saved. All we have to do is run to him and we are saved. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. We love to call your name.
Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try to
It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy we the rest of the service. We give God praise on today. From our life room to your life room, it's good to be in the house on today. We thank God for everything that he's doing. I know that you've gathered your family in front of the largest screen in your home. In this Thanksgiving week, we have a lot to thank God for. God has been good. They sang that song a few moments ago. He's been better than good to me. Right there where you are in your home, just declare with your family, God's been better than good to us. No matter what's going on, whatever God is doing, I don't want him to do it without me on today. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. Say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season please don't do it without me Lord don't do it without me come on right there where you are singing with me today Lord whatever you're doing in this season don't do it without me Oh, don't do it without me. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, this is a season, but don't do it without me. Lord, don't do it without me. I know you're touching your people. Say, Lord, whatever you're doing in the season Lord don't do it without me oh don't do it without me who's he touching on today say Lord whoever you are whoever you're touching in the season don't do it without me we are the hands of God don't do it without me. Oh, and Lord, people need a touch on today. Whoever you're touching in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Please don't do it without me. There are folk who need healing right now. Say, Lord, 
I'm willing don't do it without me Lord don't do it without me let's sing that one more time oh Lord whatever you are doing in this season don't do it without me Lord don't do it without me Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without. Willing to go where you want me to go. Don't do it without me. Touch who you want me to touch. Don't do it without me. One more time. Don't do it without me. Come on, if that's your prayer and your cry on today. Just tell him, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. They used to say a long time ago, if you're willing to do it, just say yes. Right where you are. Tell God yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Tell him yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Tell the Lord yes. Somebody tell him yes. They will just declare, I'll go. I'll go. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Lord, I'll go. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yes, I'll go. I'll go. In me, Lord, and I'll go. How far? We say all the way. Thank you, Jesus. All the way. All the way. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I won't stop here. All the way. All the way. I'm willing to go all the way. Come on, somebody, just tell him I'll go all the way. I'm committed to the process. In this season of harvest, I'm committed to being where the Lord wants me to be. I'm committed to doing what it is the Lord wants me to do. And I'll not stop right here and I want to encourage you. Keep on. As old folk would say, keep on keeping on. Knowing first and foremost that the Lord is with you. I'm blessed and thankful to be able to be in the house of the Lord and to be at the house of the Lord. I know that uh, because of the tear change that we've gone back, and rolled back some things but just like God can meet us here on this morning he can meet us in our homes we have an assignment as believers in this season and whatever God is going to do in this season the the important words here are in this season understand this this is a season 
just like we came into it we're going to come out of it I believe the Lord is going to deliver us out of this season and I thank God for that I was in Arizona um, well just a couple of days I got back uh, yesterday evening and uh, I was there with family laying to rest our cousin a beautiful service and a beautiful people and I want uh, our family there to know that we are still praying uh, and that God is still in control. And whatever he's doing in this season, I don't want to miss. Bishop Hooks wrote a song years ago that said, I don't want to miss you. God, whatever you're doing, I want to be part of it and I don't want to miss it. I appreciate all those who labor in ministry. This is a season like we've not seen before. In my lifetime, we've not seen a season like this. In this country, the process that we're in, the political season, the season of hatred and violence and strife, the season of sickness, suffering and pain. But it is a season and I believe God is going to show up and he is already showing himself so strong. You see, I was telling someone the other day, rain comes to tell us it's time to come into the ark of safety. Rain tells us one thing, it's time to look for shelter. People are looking for shelter. And we as the people of God must be ready at all times. This is not a part-time job. You're going to hear me talk about that in just a moment. Uh, we've been on our series concerning the harvest, uh, the proper harvest, the harvest that God wants us to have. And as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only thing I want is what he wants for me. Amen. The only place I want to be is where he wants me to be. I don't have time to play right now. I've got work to do. Amen. So again, those who labor with us in this season and, and who, who, who come out and make sure things are prepared so we can present a, 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 in excellence, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every person, every singer, musician, camera person, janitor, lawn person, whatever you do, the Bible says that we're to do as unto the Lord. More than anything, we want God to get the glory. Go with me to the book of John, the 14th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. I was able to see some of the names of the members as I was looking on. And I want you to know New Birth Christian Center, I love and miss you. Some of you I haven't seen in a few months. You know, it's something when something goes on longer than you expect it to. I miss the faces of New Birth Christian Center. And we know that we have our check-in, especially that's coming up. So you want to be on the lookout so we can do our members check-in. Uh, just to see and talk and hear, uh, see the faces. I, I, I was blessed on this morning to come in and to baptize a young lady even before service um, who was on her way uh, uh, toward the end of the month. She's enlisted into the Navy. And one of the, it, it was my honor to, to, um, to baptize her in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that she prepares to go and serve her country. Amen. Let's go to John, the 14th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the 7th verse. John, the 14th chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the 7th verse. Jesus talking here says, If you had known me, you would have known my father also, from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father 
and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. How do you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own initiative, but the father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am the father and I, I, believe me that I am in the father and the father in me. Otherwise believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Our key verse here is the 12th verse. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works I do shall he do and greater works than these shall he do because I go to the father this morning just for a few moments i would like to talk to you about proper workers we we, we we've been uh dealing with uh proper harvest and, and 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 we talked about the proper land and what it took to get to the proper land and and and, and, and we're going to talk about the proper worker on today and uh we'll, we'll be talking about the proper seed and then the proper harvest and then the proper storage but today i want to concentrate there is a kingdom workforce that god is daily putting together because the harvest is great because the harvest is great. Somebody at your home needs to say that the harvest is great. He said the harvest is plentiful. In Luke the 10th chapter, the second verse, he said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We have a great harvest, but not everybody is ready to bring in this great harvest that God has called us to. I want to be an end time laborer. You see, I, 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 and, and, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment because it's time for some of you to get off your seat and join the workforce. My father taught us about uh, uh, getting up and going to work. I was talking with my cousins on the other day and I said one thing he taught us was to get up and go get it. Get up and go get it. You're not going to sit around here. You've got to get up and go get it. And God is talking to his people on today. God is talking to you right there where you are. And he's saying, get up and go get it. You see, this harvest, and, and, and uh, Luanda and I live out where, they, where, 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 where they're growing grapes and, 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 and nuts. And, 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 and in, in another part, they, uh, they have chicken. The, the, the egg farm is there. And, uh, and, and so you see labor going on around you all the time. And we, when we're out there, there are days when there are trucks moving when we want to drive fast, but we can't drive as fast as we want to because labor is taking, uh, taking place and some of those trucks aren't in a rush. They're saying, look, we, we, we're, we're bringing in a harvest out here. When you moved out here, there was harvest going on. <laughs> and we're not going to stop harvesting just because you moved out here. You see, there is a process. Understand this. There is a process that is already in place. The harvest is already taking place and it was taking place when you got here. So you can sit down if you want to. You can try and rush it if you want to. Harvest comes in its season and there's nothing you can do about it if you don't want to work in it. But understand, if you don't want to work in it, it's not going to stop because you don't want to work. When we speak of this kingdom workforce, 
We speak of his kingdom workforce. It takes kingdom laborers. And the kingdom laborer is one who commits to following Jesus. A committed lifestyle. You see, uh, when, when th 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 this kingdom worker, when you when 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 you come to the place that you are ready uh, to sign up for what God has for you, it's going to take uh, this kingdom lifestyle. So the first thing, and there are three things I'm going to talk about. The first thing is the job accepted. You must buy in to be a kingdom worker. You must. You must buy in to being a kingdom worker or a kingdom laborer. This is not something you just do on a whim. You've got to totally buy in. You see, when you, when, 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 when you accept a job, whether McDonald's, Burger King, uh, they give you a uniform and you can't tell them, well, that's not my color. You know, I, I, I got to, it doesn't go good with my makeup. They'll tell you either you got to fully buy into wearing the outfit that we supply or you can go work for somebody else and see if you can find somebody who will work by your rules. But when you fully buy in as a kingdom laborer, we come into partnership with the Lord Jesus Christ and our co-laborers or fellow laborers. You, we, 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 we come into partnership. We, when, when we join this force, this kingdom force, when I gave my heart to the Lord many years ago, I accepted an assignment to walk with Jesus. We sing that song. I am determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. And it get good to you and you say, oh, yes, I am. You see, you've got to buy in, buy into this. And we, we then we become uh, partners with Christ and, and co-laborers. You see, you've got to understand no one laborer can bring in the harvest by themselves. You see, many ministries are learning and accepting the fact that while we have the opportunity, New Birth Christian Center, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to operate as a ministry, but I have full understanding New Birth Christian Center cannot save the world. I need my co-laborers. I need my fellow workers. You see, we, 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 we've got to get to a place where we understand this is not the time for competition. Souls are dying. Two is better than one, the Bible says. Because they bring in a great return. When you, when you learn how to hook up with another neighbor, a fellow co, a, a, a co-laborer in the kingdom, your work, if you just add one, your work has been cut in half. And the more you add, the more you cut into the labor intensity and, 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 and the greater the harvest becomes because you acknowledge this is something I cannot do by myself. New Birth Christian Center, understand this. I love preaching the gospel, but this is not a work I can do by myself. I thank God for the preachers and pastors and, and deacons and ministers and, and leaders and congregants, uh, those who are part of the body, those who have come together to say, we can do this thing together. New birth, we can do this thing together. And then new birth begins to connect with other churches and, and powerful ministries in the city and around the world. Why? Because there is a world to reach. No one person can do this by themselves. So at the acceptance because when we talk about work and, 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 and when we talk about uh, uh, kingdom assignments, uh, as I said a moment ago, because it can't, you, you just can't be lazy and work the kingdom. Jesus is talking here and, 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 and he says, 
to them, if you had known me. The verse up above it, he tells them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except you come by me. I am the way. I'm here representing the kingdom. I am, Jesus says, the representation of the kingdom. Have you ever had an interview and you wished you could go to somebody else? That interview just wasn't going too well. And you just want, you, you were saying to yourself, I wish somebody would just come in and take their place. But you see, you had to go through that person to get that job. There is no other way to be a kingdom worker except to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Taking on that name. You see, I, I was talking about McDonald's and Burger King. If you work for Burger King, you've got to sing the Burger King song if they have one. I know at Walmart, I used to walk in sometimes and they they, they, they had a little song they were singing and, and the crew had to gather around and, and, and the, minister, uh, the, the manager was trying to hype them up for the day and he's talking to them, trying to encourage them. And then he said, come on, let's sing the song. And, and he began to sing the song with, with energy and you can look around at those who were looking around saying I am not singing this song Walmart Walmart yeah go Walmart Walmart they're saying that listen you have the same type of people in the kingdom they're in the kingdom but they really haven't bought in they've even accepted the uniform but there are certain things you don't ask them to do because you don't have their full backing. They, they, they've not fully bought in. They've not fully submitted or committed. You see, there, there are those, there are those who are going to give their lives to the Lord hoping that this pandemic is going to be over and they can get back to what they used to do, but they want to be safe. Not necessarily saved. Just let me be safe. You know, folks is dying out there. I need to get safe. But honey, understand this. God wants to save you. Not just for today. Not just for a season. He wants to save you for the rest of your life. But will we commit? You see, uh, when we talk about a workforce and when we talk about laborers, a laborer is one who works to bring in, works to bring in a harvest. There are duties, you see, and when you talk about workers, and when you talk about employment, you have the full-time employment, and then you have those who are day, what they call day laborers. In Matthew, the 20th chapter, the first through the 16th verse, we see those who came at the beginning of the day and those who came at the end of the day. And they were paid a denarius, which is equal to a day's work. They were given a day's pay for a day's work. Listen, my dad used to sing this song uh, and I always loved to hear him as soon as he opened his mouth, working for the Lord. I knew, you know, everybody knew it was, it was going to be good. He said, we'll pay off after a while. You see, there are those who, have, who, who, who will come late in this harvest season and there are those who, who, who have been walking this road and, 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 and who understand that, 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 that full-time employment, there's something that happens for, 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 for that one who buys into full-time. And what I learned that there are a couple of differences between full-time workers and day laborers. You see, a day laborer looks for a job that's going to keep him today. They can come out, do their job, but at the end of that day, they're not looking to get paid in two weeks. At the end of that day, they're looking to get paid right now. I came and gave you a day's work. Pay me today. But when you talk about, uh, uh, you, you see, the, 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 the day labor 
laborer and then the part time worker and there are those who want to work part time you see because they have they, they, they've not really bought into the fact that I need full time employment it takes full time employment to take care of what I need taken care of so they're okay working two or three hours a day they're okay working three or four hours a day but then you have the full time employee The full-time employee comes with some things the day laborer and, 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 and the part-time laborer don't get. They get pay and pay increase or opportunities at pay increase. And they get what's called a benefits and the benefits package is something that's, that, 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 that makes the job worth it most of the time. It's not, you, you don't get the dollar amount you want. But when they add that benefits package on, that benefits package speaks to a whole lot of things, you see. Because when you get in trouble, you can use your benefits package. When you, when you don't feel so good, you can use the benefits package. And, and when, when, when you, then you get to the place where on top of the, the, the pay and on top uh, 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 of the benefits, then you have the retirement package. You see, in the retirement package speaks to your work over the process of time. The retirement package speaks to your dedication and your commitment to one company for, 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 for a season of time. Normally it's many years that you've labored for this company and, 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 and when it comes time, you see that we were talking on the other day, some folk only get a watch or they get a pin at, after 25, 30 years of work. And, but you see the watch and the pin is not re really where it comes in. It's that retirement time and check that I've been working for. You see, I've not just been working for my hourly wage. I've not just been working for my benefits package. I've been working and something's been put away. So when I get to the place where I can no longer work this job or no longer desire to because my time has been put in, I can now get my retirement pay. You see, the powerful thing about working for the kingdom, and they used to say the benefits are out of this world. The retirement plan is like no other. What are you saying? They used to say, work, like I said, working for the Lord pays off after a while. But working for the Lord, you see, when I work for the Lord long enough, my retirement package kicks in and I go and I receive my crown. And I go and I receive my eternal reward. I, I move on up, they used to say, a little higher. Thank you, Jesus. The duties, you see, the, 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 the duties of the laborer are to bring in the harvest. We have the job accepted. Next, we have the job defined. Jesus told them in the 12th verse, I say to you, he who believes in me. So you've bought into the company. You've taken on now the company name everything I do is in the name of Jesus when you look at my life it says I work for kingdom incorporated I work for Jesus and Jesus alone I wear the badge with honor now we get to the definition the job description he says, when you buy into this, you're going to do what I do. Jesus is saying, just do what I do because the product sells itself. Listen, the kingdom doesn't need your added stuff. The kingdom of God speaks for itself who Jesus is speaks for itself he said you, you see the and he, this is how this is what he said the things I do you'll do and greater you see what brings in the harvest is the laborer doing what Jesus did yes. Yes. we 
watched the life of Jesus and souls were brought to God because Jesus did what he did. You see, when we talk and speak of the harvest and speak of our job duties, our job is about souls. My job is not to put a Cadillac in your driveway. My job is not to give you a driveway to put your Cadillac in. My job is to preach Jesus and him crucified. He said in his word, go into all the world and make disciples. That's what my job is, is to train folk for this harvest that we're in, to train them to watch, I believe uh, Bishop Henfield, uh, his church saying is train, develop, and harvest. You see, when we train the people of God properly to do the work of the kingdom, because we understand this harvest is about souls. This harvest is about the lost. This harvest is about the needy. This harvest is about the sick. This harvest is about the dying. This harvest is about the one who feels separated from God. This harvest, somebody say, this harvest. When we begin to understand. You see, David went into a cave. They, the, 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 they named it Cave Adalim. It was named Adalim. And, and, and the people that were drawn there were people who were tired of what was going on. They were tired of the way their lives were. They were tired of being considered misfits in, 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 in their nation. They were tired. What does that equate to? It equated to a ripe harvest for David. They were needy. They were hurting. They were lost. No leadership. They were looking for someone who could help them out of their situation. Who could give them a way to go. Who could challenge them to do better in life. You see the kingdom is not about giving you everything you want. The kingdom is about challenging you to get up and go get it. This fruit was ripe. To be harvested. There, 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 there are those who are hurting right now. There are those who are contemplating suicide even as we speak right now. There are those who are depressed in your home because of this season. There are those with strife going on in your family because of this season. The word of the Lord to you today, young man, is live. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to die. You don't have to drink yourself out of your consciousness. Live. And you, you see, you, you can stand up and live for Jesus. You need to understand you are ripe right now for this harvest. You see, and Jesus said, do what I do and the harvest you will see is ripe. He told them, he said, just look up and look at the harvest. It's white unto harvest. It's ripe. The crop is ripe. People are ready. Got to bring this thing in because the fruit is ready. To be harvested. You see, th 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 there are so many souls that want Jesus. Number one, stop trying to harvest fruit that's already been harvested. Girl, I know it's in this pandemic and, 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 and you've been thinking about, you know, you, you told me two years ago, you, you, you know, you wasn't happy in your church. Come on over to my church because this is just the right time to make a move. If it's in your spirit, you be yourself still. Be still. And be right. You see... If they saved, why are you still trying to win them? <laughs> why, why are you trying to get folks who already go to church to come to church with you? Jesus said, the whole not 
or, or need not a physician, but it's the sick who need a physician. The whole has already been ripened and harvested. Leave them alone. Go get, you see, but there's challenge, there's work. Listen, we've been saying all this all throughout this series, the harvest is work. But a lot of times because we don't want to work and go witness to somebody who may give us a little challenge, we want to go harvest somebody that's already been harvested. I was just calling you because I got a word. I got, I got a word for you. I know you're going through, I got a word. Go take that word to somebody in Walmart and go take that word to somebody at Target. Go take that word to somebody at at the gas station. And because we don't, one of the reasons we don't do it is because we feel like we'll be met with opposition. Harvest is work. Well, they might tell me no. If they tell you no, move on to the next one. There's a whole big old world to win. I never get discouraged because people won't come to church with me. What I tell you, what I tell them, and people all around me will tell you. What I tell them is, hey, I'm looking for you. Well, you know, I'm, I didn't, they said, I, I didn't say I was coming this Sunday. I said, well, I'm looking for you this Sunday. Just know when you walk in these doors, I'm looking for you. If we have ever met and you've not made it to the church yet, just know I'm still looking for you. When they see me on the street, they almost can't look me in the eye. I, 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 I know I said I was coming. I said, and I'm still looking for you. But you see, they're just not ready yet. They're not, they, they, they've not come into the place where they're broken enough. They're, they've not come to the place. You see, there's still kind of a hardness to them. And they've not come to that place where they're broken. Listen, don't stop praying because they've not come yet. They're just not ready. There is a season that is coming. And yes, now is the season. But if they're not ripe, leave them alone. I've learned that fruit out of season makes folks sick. You get them in and you make them saved. And they never accepted the Lord, neither did they accept discipleship. <laughs> and a person who won't or, or, or refuses discipleship stays unripened you got f- folks in, in in church that's been there for 25 30 years yeah they still mean as hell you can't have stand to go to church with them because they just straight up mean hear what i'm saying mean saint be ripened but it's that same person who will refuse to be discipled I don't need nobody telling me what to do. I got my own Bible and my own relationship with Jesus. I don't need church folk. I'm tired of church folk anyway. You, then they, you know, all that. Uh, uh, no, be healed and be saved. Be set free so you can, you, so like the commercial says, so you too can bring in the harvest. God wants to use all of us. But what happens is a hurt person who refuses to be discipled will hurt people. I'm still talking about the proper harvest. The last three, excuse me, number three, are the job benefits. We talked about the employment package. John 13, uh, 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 John, John 14, 13 reads that whoever, whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to do it. So the father can be glorified. You see, when you have labored like you should, and when you have done the things that Jesus has called you to do, you can ask. There are things Lawanda and I have asked. Because we have done what he's called us to do. We have reached those he's calling us to reach. We have sacrificed days. We have sacrificed our time. We have sacrificed at points our family to 
get up and do what God has called us to do. We've taken, you see, we, 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 we got to the place where we couldn't care about what people said or what they thought. You see, you can talk about people all you want to. And, 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 and what I notice is a lot of times entertainers and, and those who make a lot of money who used to work at fast food places talk about people who work at fast food places. If that job is taking care of your house, do it. If it is paying your bills, do it. You see, we have generations and, and, and they learn more generation after generation after generation to get quick and easy money. Because they don't want to do the work. You know what's funny to me? It's the same person who will say, not working at no McDonald's, no Taco Bell. Talking about hand me some more sauce and people talking that they don't understand. I jump through that window and they, 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 they. but that same person will go to get that fast money, get caught trying to get that fast money, go to prison trying to get that fast money, then turn around and write a letter to mama, mama. You would be so proud of me. They gave me a job in the kitchen. I'm over the mashed potatoes. Mama would have been proud if you were working at McDonald's flipping burgers. If they would have put you over the fry, she could have saw you every day. Now you need mama to send you some money because you wanted to get it another way and understand I know I know everything that's going on in our world and I understand what's happening in our communities but you have no excuse. Get up. Get yourself a job. Make your own money. Turn around and bless your mama. You see, you, 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 you've got to begin to look at things a different way. Stop looking at those who are riding on 20s and 22s and 36s, whatever they got out now. You got a little Toyota that you got to jump into it. Wheels so high. But still won't work a job. Get up. You see, those who are kingdom side, get up. If you want God, don't hate on folks God is blessing. You've got to look at them and say and, and see what they're doing. If they're doing what they're supposed to do, if they're doing what Jesus did, they can ask what they will. That's what the Bible says. When you do what God says do, you can tell God. God, according to John 14. 13 you said I can ask what I will when I accept you for who you are and because I work in this glorious kingdom I am your child and as your child and as your servant as an employee of the kingdom I'm asking for benefits on today I need healing in my body I'm accessing my benefits I need saving in my family I'm accessing my benefits I need counseling because my mind is going crazy I'm accessing Accessing my benefits. Jesus, you said ask. Not only did you say ask, you said you would do it. So because you said in your word you would do it, I can ask and then I can just turn around and say thank you. You see, when you know what benefits you have, it's one thing to have benefits. It's another thing to know about the benefits you have. When you know about the benefits you have, you, you, uh, uh, Jacob worked for Rachel. Laban gave him Leah. Had to work another seven years <laughs> to get what had been promised him. 
You see, sometimes in the kingdom, when, you, when you're in the kingdom, people will not necessarily do you right. That doesn't mean you stop working. I'm talking to somebody now who feels, who, who feels like you've given up because some people messed you over in the church. God will never forget your labors. And if you're looking for the perfect church, let me know when you find it. I might come join with you. Because people, yes, there are people who can be hurt in church, but some folk hurt you in your family too. And you're going to be at their table on Thanksgiving Day, even though they said you're not supposed to be. I'm t listen, I'm here to tell you, if you've been hurt at New Birth Christian Center, come back to the table. I apologize if you have. And, and, and listen, there's not a church that hadn't, that, that hadn't hurt somebody. Whether intentional or unintentional. But what I am saying is, come back. If that's, if that's somebody you call family, come back. Come back to the table. So we can work this harvest together. So we can bring in this great harvest that God has called us to bring in. So we can receive, receive the reward. You see, in this wonderful kingdom that we preach, there's opportunity for advancement. He said, greater works shall you do. <laughs> You've gone through your training process and it's time for your greater works. We're living in a greater works day. God expects greater works from you. I don't, I don't care how long you've been in church. Some need to go back and be discipled again because they have a heart now to do greater works. Let's get back to discipleship so we can grow workers in the kingdom who can have everything they said, God said they could have. My bishop used to say, I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. I am a citizen of the kingdom. I wear my kingdom badge. For me, it's Jesus first. And then I can do, you see, because I am a co-laborer. Bible calls us heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Because I'm a co-laborer, there are things I have access to. I can do, if Jesus did it, so can I. He said, I'm going to model it for you. My dad, when he would teach us how to do things, he'd teach us how to edge the line and mow the lawn and, 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 and work in the fields. And, and, and what he would do was teach us and say, all right, now get on over here and do it. And sometimes he'd teach us so long it, it'd already be done. But he made sure we didn't have the excuse you didn't show me. Jesus said, I've shown you. Now I'm going to be elevated. And because he said this, uh, because I'm going away. He told them in another portion of scripture, he said, it's good for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. Your help can't come. God will never give you an assignment. He won't give you two things, the help and the grace for. If God gave us the assignment, hear what I'm saying, new birth? If God gave us the assignment, he gave us the help, which is the Holy Ghost. And he gave us his grace to complete the task. I'm going to pray in a moment. He said, whatever you do, know that it's Greater Works Day. I believe people are going to be saying, listen, God has called you to bring in this harvest. He said, if I called you, I'll equip you. I'll justify you. And I'll qualify you. I'll equip you. Do the task that I've called.
called you to do. And I'll give you the grace to do it. You, you, you see the powerful thing in that with every level of advancement comes a new level of grace. Because God knows that whatever level you're in, there's somebody who's going to come into the kingdom today. I want to tell you, you're coming in with a level of grace. No crazy expectations just for you to do what God has said to do. And as God advances you, he also gives you another level of grace. There's a grace for your home because God has called you to win it. There's a grace for you in ministry because God has called you to be elevated. Listen, if you see someone has just given their hearts to the Lord, don't, don't, don't become their hammer. I thought you were supposed to be saved. No, don't become their hammer. Let them know there's a grace for them. There are requirements, but with those requirements, there, 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 there is a grace. I'm going to pray, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity to work in this glorious kingdom. I thank you for the assignment. I thank you that you've made me ready so you can use me. I thank you that you've gifted us. You've called us and you've given us an assignment. I thank you for this. God, for those who are at home on today, be whatever it is they need to complete the assignment that you've given them for their homes, for their communities, for those who are hurting around them, those who are lost around them and feel like they don't know what to do. Give them what to say and when to say it. For those of you who right now want to become part of this workforce that I preached about today, whether it's at New Birth or your home church, or you've not been to church and you want to get in, the first part of it is simply acknowledging Jesus for who he is and what he wants to do in your life. If you don't know the Lord, repeat this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I stand before you, a sinner. I acknowledge every fault. And I believe that you are God alone. So I open my heart and I invite you in. I invite you in today and for the rest of my life. I will commit to serving you, to living for you, to loving you and loving your people all the days of my life in Jesus name. Now if you've said that prayer right now, he's accepted you into this glorious kingdom that we preach and we celebrate you on today. And for those of you who have not been working especially in ministry and you've been going to church, it's time for you to get up and serve God in your house be a laborer in your house, a co-laborer and a fellow worker. At this time, I'm going to receive an offering. There are those who know what you are supposed to do. The tithe belongs to God. Even in this season, the tithe, one dime out of every dollar, belongs to God. You don't have the right to hold on to it or to give it to who you want to give it to and call it your tithe. The tenth goes to the house. And above that is the offering, that which we give with a free will and a glad heart. My prayer is that there are those who are listening and the Lord is speaking to you right now concerning your giving, even as I speak. Don't hold back when God speaks to you. And then there are those who simply give out of obedience. Listen, God doesn't have to speak to you every time to give. 
I'm waiting on the Lord so he can tell me what to give. No, sometimes you just got to say, I, I, I'm going to give toward the need or I'm going to give simply because I love my house. Don't give your offering to the grocery store. Give it to God's house. We've been blessed and God has blessed us to be able to do wonderful things. To keep ministry going. And it's because of people like you who are concerned not just with loving God but loving his people and make sure making sure that his house has everything that it needs. We thank you all today because it's gifts that you don't have to give, but you choose to. And my prayer is the Lord bless you many times over. We're going to get ready to go back into praise and worship. And as we do, as I say weekly and during all of our services, the Lord bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Children and their children, and their children may pray.
for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations.